And first up, what is global illumination? I'm just going to open up our frame buffer to demonstrate here. And I just want to show you this, this render. We've got some lights in this scene and they're coming from the right here and there's one in the left. And when light hits an object like the ground, it doesn't just stop. It actually bounces off of that object and then bounces onto another one and then bounces off and bounces on another one and it just keeps on bouncing. And this creates indirect illumination. So if lights just stopped when they hit an object, we'd end up with something like this and there's no light bouncing up here, for example. The lights are just stopping. When a light hits an object, it doesn't just stop. It bounces off of that surface and it keeps on bouncing. So the light picks up color information from the objects it's hitting and it keeps on bouncing. And this creates indirect illumination. So if the light came in from here and bounced off of this surface, it's bouncing light under here and it's lighting this up. And if it just stopped, we'd end up with an image like this where the light's hitting this surface and just stopping. So these areas wouldn't get lit and that isn't very realistic. As of V-Ray 5, it's recommended to use brute force and brute force has traditionally been higher quality but slower than the irradiance map. But as V-Ray has sped up over the version, so has brute force. So now the default is brute force and light cache as our secondary engine. And this is the best in terms of quality and speed. And if you want to reset your settings, you can just switch from V-Ray to any other engine and then just jump back to V-Ray and it will reset all the settings to default. Now another reason to use brute force is light mix. If I go over to the render elements and add the light mix render element, and I'll run an interactive render. We'll see that we have access to light mix and we can make changes to our image from here. Whereas if I change our primary engine to irradiance map and render an interactive, we'll see that we don't have access to the light mix and it says, please add light mix to the render elements, which we have. So really this is a sign that brute force is being focused on in the future and I wouldn't expect a radiance map to be developed anymore. So now is probably a good time to start using brute force as your primary render engine. And the same goes for light cache. Some really good options only work with light cache. For example, if we go over to the camera, we can actually, I'm just gonna render an interactive. We can actually use auto exposure and auto white balance, which are great tools. But if for any reason we wanted to use brute force and brute force, for example, um, an example of why you'd use this is in an exterior and you had a really good machine. But now when we go over to the camera, we'll see that these are grayed out and we can't actually use them. So again, it's just worth sticking to these defaults of primary engine as brute force and secondary as light cache. But I do understand that brute force isn't as fast as irradiance. And in some cases you might want to use irradiance map and light mix. And a way of getting around this would be to interactive render with light mix on. And then you could make your changes. So let's say light one, which I've got selected over here on the right. Let's say we, we double the multiplier. So if I put two in there, let's just stop the render and I'm going to push that to the scene and hit yes. We'll see that that actually doubled because we times that by two. And then if we jump back to the radiance map and run the render, it's the same. So what you can do is make your light mix edits using brute force. And then if you did want to use a radiance map for the final render, just push it to the scene and change the primary engine to a radiance map and hit render. And the same can be done with the light cache. Um, if we select our camera, and we put 
auto exposure on and auto white balance it's not looking too good in here but say they're the settings we we wanted to use we can actually hit transfer to camera so now these settings have moved over into the camera which means if we put this on brute force as a secondary engine and we can't select these anymore these settings have actually been moved into the scene and you'll get the same result so what you're really doing is moving the light mix settings to the lights in the scene and you're moving the camera settings to the camera in the scene rather than keeping it in the frame buffer but going forward try to use brute force and light cache as much as you can hi guys and thanks for watching i hope you found that video useful this video is actually part of a larger course so if you think you'd find that useful then check out the link in the description and feel free to like and subscribe